Welcome to the St Nicholas Wonder Walk. This walk will take you from St Nicholas Church to Giggs Hill Green. The walk is intended for all ages, from young to old. The Bible passages are read with children in mind. It is intended that you listen and walk, pausing where you need to along the way. The Wonder Walk starts in our 900 year old church. Take a pew, have a look around. What can you see? What symbols are there? Look up to the rooftop, look down at the floor, wonder how many people have sat where you are now. Now take a walk around the church. Have a look at the windows. Can you find a window which shows the baby Jesus? Perhaps one of the most well-known Bible stories is that of Jesus' birth. God sent his only son to come down to us to help us live our lives in the right way. Take a moment, look at the window with Mary and Jesus and wonder, how did Mary feel? When you're ready, move to the back of the church. Can you find the baptism font? Walk around it, touch it, feel the stone. Wonder how many babies have been baptised here at St Nicholas. Look at the names on the walls. Can you recognise anyone? Now listen to this story of John the Baptist. About the same time Jesus was born, another baby was born. His name was John and God had a special job for him. John was going to get everyone ready for Jesus. John was a bit unusual. He lived in the desert. He wore itchy, scratchy outfits made of camel hair. He had a big, big bushy beard and long, long scraggly hair. And here is the oddest thing of all. He ate locusts, which he dipped in honey. But God sent John to tell his people something important. Stop running away from God and run to him instead, John said. You need to be rescued. I have good news. The rescuer is coming. Make your hearts ready for him. Yes, get ready because your king is coming back for you. Great crowds listened to John. They were sorry they had sinned and they wanted to stop running away from God. They wanted to be rescued. So John baptised them, which means he plunged them in and out of the water. It showed that they wanted to follow God and begin a new life. One day, John was baptising people in the Jordan River as usual when he looked up and saw a man walking down to the water's edge. God spoke quietly to John. This is the one. John's heart leapt. This was the moment he'd been waiting for all his life. Look, John said as Jesus came down into the water, but his voice came out as a whisper. He couldn't make it any louder. It was all he could do to even speak. The Lamb of God, God's best Lamb, who takes away the sins of the whole world. Will you baptise me too? Jesus asked. Who am I? John asked. To baptise you? It's what God wants me to do, Jesus said. So John baptised Jesus. Suddenly, it was as if someone had drawn back curtains in a dark room, as if heaven itself had opened, because a beautiful light broke through the clouds and shone down onto Jesus, bathing him in gold. Beads of water glittered and sparkled like tiny diamonds in his hair. A white dove flew down and gently rested on Jesus, and a voice came down from heaven. It was clear and strong and loud, so everyone could hear. This is my own son, and I love him. 
I am very pleased with him, God said. Listen to him. Heaven had broken through. The great rescue had begun. It's time to leave the church now and head down church walk. As you leave, consider the story of Jesus' baptism. Think about the dove that came down onto Jesus. Look about you. Can you see any birds in the sky? Can you hear any bird song? As you walk quietly, ask the Holy Spirit to come to you. When you reach the top of Ashley Road, restart this commentary. As you walk down Church Walk, you are travelling between two churches, St Nicholas Church at one end and Spear Road Church at the other end. Churches are the places where we as Christians gather to follow God. We're now going to consider a passage where Jesus gathered together the first followers. Jesus knew if he was going to get God's people back to rescue them, he needed to find some helpers and friends. He had a lot to do and he would need some people to help him. Who would make good helpers, do you think? Clever ones? Rich ones? Strong, important ones? Some people might think so. But I'm sure by now you don't need me to tell you that they'd be wrong. Because the people God uses don't have to know a lot of things. Or have a lot of things. They just have to need him a lot. One day, Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee when he saw some brothers and friends mending their nets. They were poor fishermen. Jesus called out to them, Let's go! Peter, Andrew, James and John looked up at this man on the shore and they couldn't explain it. Their boats needed to be put away, their nets needed mending, fish were still wriggling on the shore. But something about this stranger made them just drop their nets and their fish leave their boats and everything and follow him. This God-man was like no one they'd ever met. When they looked at Jesus, their hearts filled up with a wonderful, forever sort of happiness and inside it was as if they were running free in an open field. Meeting Jesus would change all of them forever. As you continue your wonder walk, reflect on that Bible passage. Wonder at the trust that Jesus' friends put in him. If you're doing this walk with someone else, you could play follow my leader. Stand in a line with the leader leading the way and maybe do some funny actions that everyone else has to copy. At the end of church walk, pass Spear Road Church and head towards the station. Turn right under the tunnel and then head left into the dell. Find a space in the dell and take a moment to listen to our next Bible passage when you're ready. Wherever Jesus went, lots of people went too. They loved being near him. And when Jesus saw all the people, his heart was filled with love for them. They were like a little flock of sheep that didn't have a shepherd to take care of them. So Jesus sat them all down and he talked to them. The people sat quietly on the grassy mountainside and listened. From where they sat, they could see the blue lake glittering below them and little fishing boats coming in from a night's catch. 
the spring air was fresh and clear. See those birds over there, Jesus said. Everyone looked. Little sparrows were pecking at seeds along the stony path. Where do they get their food? Perhaps they have pantries all stocked up, cabinets full of food? Everyone laughed. Who's ever seen a bird with a bag of groceries? No, Jesus said. They don't need to worry about that, because God knows what they need and he feeds them. And what about those wide wildflowers? Everyone looked. All around them flowers were growing. Anemones, daisies, pure white lilies. Where do they get their lovely clothes? Do they make them? Or do they go to work every day so they can buy them? Do they have closets full of clothes? Everyone laughed again. Who's ever seen a flower putting on a dress? No, Jesus said. They don't need to worry about that because God clothes them in royal robes of splendour. Not even a king is that well dressed. They had never met a king, but as they gazed out over the lake, glittering and sparkling below them, the hillsides dressed in reds, purples and golds, they felt a great burden lift from their hearts. They could not imagine anything more beautiful. Little flock, Jesus said, you are more important than birds, more important than flowers. The birds and the flowers don't sit and worry about things, and God doesn't want his children to worry either. God loves to look after the birds and the flowers, and he loves to look after you too. Take a moment now to walk through the dell. Look at God's creation. Can you see birds? Squirrels? Can you see the trees? Maybe some flowers? Wonder at the beauty of it. Climb the hill at the end and turn around and look back. It's only a small space, a little bit of green in our suburban town, but it's filled with God's creation. Wonder at the sight and at the sound. Now turn back towards the railway tunnel. As you walk through it, can you make an echo? How long can you hear your voice? Then remain very quiet. Can you hear Jesus? Is he talking to you? Continue your walk down Ash Path towards the school. As you head down Ash Path, you'll be passing a school and heading towards the nursery. Perhaps you'll be able to hear children playing. Perhaps you can see where they would play. Perhaps it's quiet because they're all at home. Take a moment to consider this next Bible passage about children. One day, some little children came to visit Jesus. Jesus' helpers tried to send them away. Jesus doesn't have time for you, they said. He's too tired. But they were wrong. Jesus always had time for children. Don't ever send them away, Jesus said. Bring the little ones to me. Now, if you had been there, what do you think? Would you have had to line up quietly to see Jesus? Do you think Jesus would have asked you how good you'd been before he'd give you a hug? Would you have had to be on your best behaviour and get dressed up and not speak until you're spoken to? Or would you have done just what these children did, run straight up to Jesus and let him pick you up in his arms and swing you and kiss you and hug you and then sit you on his lap and listen to your stories and your chats? You see, children love Jesus and they knew they didn't need to do anything special for Jesus to love them. All they needed to do was to run into his arms. And so that's just what they did. Well, after all the laughing and games, Jesus turned to his helpers and said, No matter how big you grow, never grow up so much that you lose your child's heart full of trust in God. 
Be like these children. They are the most important in my kingdom. As you pass the schools and think about this passage, wonder at the love that Jesus had for the children. Perhaps you could make the shape of a heart and leave it somewhere on your walk. You could use leaves or sticks or draw it in the gravel or dust, a reminder of Jesus' love. Turn right off Ash Path towards the old people's home and the community centre. Behind these is the doctor's surgery. These are places where there are many old and sick. There are many stories in the Bible of the miracles that Jesus performed to heal the sick. Pause now to think of someone who you may know who may need Jesus' healing. Hold them in your hearts as you continue to walk towards Giggs Hill Green. We're going to consider now the Easter story. As we began our wonder walk with Jesus' birth, so we will finish it with his death. Let's first consider what we now call as Palm Sunday. It was the time for the Passover festival when people remembered the time when God had rescued Moses and the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. Jesus spent a few days with his friends Then he set off for the city of Jerusalem. Jesus sent two friends ahead of him. Go to the village over there. You will find a young donkey that has never been ridden before. Bring it to me. If the owner asks what you are doing, tell him that your master needs it. They went to the village and saw the young donkey. They were just untying it when the owner said, What are you doing with my donkey? The master needs it, they said. They took the donkey to Jesus and put their cloaks on the donkey's back. Then Jesus rode into Jerusalem. Great crowds of people cheered for Jesus and waved palm branches and spread their cloaks on the road. Hosanna, they cried in a loud voice. God bless the king who comes in the name of the Lord. As you walk across the green, imagine a famous sportsman or someone who you look up to coming towards you. What would you shout out? How do you think you would have felt if you were in the crowd when Jesus was coming along the road? If you've got the energy, run like a horse or a donkey, just like that young donkey that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on. Find a bench now or a place to sit where you can see the cross in the corner of Giggs Hill Green. Don't go up to it yet. View it from afar and take a moment to listen to this next Bible passage. Jesus had many friends, but he also had enemies and they wanted to get rid of him. Jesus knew that he was going to die, but he shared one last special meal with his disciples and washed their feet. Jesus took a cup of wine, gave thanks to God, and passed it round to his friends. Take this and drink, he said to them. Then Jesus took a piece of bread, broke it, and gave it to the others, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this and remember me. They didn't understand what Jesus meant. They didn't understand when he told them he would soon be going away from them. Jesus had done nothing wrong, but he was arrested. The soldiers were cruel to him. They beat him and made him wear a purple robe. They put a crown of thorns on his head. People call you a king, they mocked. Jesus had to carry a heavy cross up a hill called Golgotha. Two criminals were going to be put on crosses next to Jesus, but Jesus had done nothing wrong. Above his head was a sign saying, King of the Jews. Jesus' mother Mary and his best friends stood close by and watched. They hated to see him suffering. 
Jesus was put on a cross and left to die. Darkness covered the land. At the ninth hour, Jesus cried out to God in a loud voice. Then he died. Jesus' body was taken down from the cross and put in a tomb in the rock. A large stone was rolled across the door of the tomb. It was a terrible day. Take a moment now to slowly walk to the cross. Imagine you are Jesus. Imagining you are carrying the cross on your back, knowing that you are going to die. Wonder at his strength. Take a seat beneath the cross and listen to the next part of this amazing story. Soon after the terrible events of Jesus' death, Mary Magdalene and some of the women headed to the tomb to wash Jesus' body. The early morning sun slanted through the ancient olive trees, drops of dew glittering on leaves and grasses, little tears everywhere. The friends walked quietly along the hilly path, through the olive groves, until they reached the tomb and immediately noticed something odd. It was wide open. They peered through the opening into the dark tomb. But wait, Jesus' body was gone. And something else, a shining man was there with clothes made from lightning. Don't be scared, the angel said. But they couldn't help it. They screamed anyway. The angel asked them, what are you doing here? This is a tomb, and tombs are for dead people. The women couldn't speak. Jesus isn't dead anymore, he said. He's alive again. And their hearts leapt. And then the angel laughed with such gladness that they felt for a moment as if they had woken from a nightmare. The other women rushed home, but Mary stayed behind. How could it be true? Jesus was definitely dead. How could he be alive? Just then, Mary heard someone else in the garden. Perhaps it's the gardener, she thought. He'll know where Jesus' body is. I don't know where Jesus is, Mary asked urgently. I can't find him. But it was all right. Jesus knew where she was, and he had found her. Mary. Only one person said her name like that. She could hear her heart thumping. She turned around. She could just make out a figure. She shaded her eyes to see and thought she was dreaming. But she wasn't dreaming. She was seeing. Jesus. Mary fell to the ground. Sudden tears filled her eyes and great sobs shook her whole body and all she wanted in that moment was to cling to Jesus and never let him go. You'll be able to hold on to me later, Mary, Jesus said gently, and always be close to me. But now go and tell the others that I'm alive. Mary ran and ran all the way to the city. She had never run so fast or so far in all her life. She felt she could have run forever. She didn't even feel like her feet touched the ground. The sun seemed to be dancing and gleaming and bouncing across the sky, racing with her and shining brighter than she could ever remember in the clear, fresh air. And it seemed to her that morning, as she ran, almost as if the whole world had been made anew almost as if the whole world was singing for joy. The trees, tiny sounds in the grass, the birds, her heart. Was God really making everything sad come untrue? Was he making even death come untrue? She couldn't wait to tell Jesus' friends. They won't believe it, she laughed. She was right, of course. As you wonder at the marvel of Jesus' resurrection, have a look around the cross. Take a selfie and send it to someone you know with the words, He is risen. 
or even better, post it on our Facebook site. See if you can find two sticks and use them to make the symbol of the cross and place it at the bottom of the cross at Giggs Hill Green. This is our reminder that Jesus died on the cross for us to take away our sins. And that is the wonder of the Easter story.